A very good day to everyone. I'm pleased to welcome one and all to Asuntas FB Live Talk. Allow me to introduce myself. I'm Andrea Pradasa, and I'm a physiotherapist in Asunta Hospital. I'm honored to be the moderator for today's live talk. Our topic today is sleep apnea. Sleep apnea is one of the most common sleep disorders worldwide, and it can affect children and adults of all ages. It is my pleasure to introduce today our speaker of the day, Dr. Mangaya Karasi. She has graduated with an MD degree from the University of Malaysia, Sarawak, and has completed her MRCP from the Royal College of Physicians of London. She later obtained her respiratory fellowship from the Ministry of Health, Malaysia. She has served as a medical officer in Hospital Tawal Sabah and Hospital Taiping Pera. She has been certified as an expert in sleep medicine and certified somnologist by the European Sleep and Research Society. Currently in Asunta Hospital, Dr. Mangaya Karasi is practicing as a general and respiratory physician with a subspecialty in sleep medicine. Before I hand over the next portion of our session to our speaker, if you have any questions during the talk, uh, please feel free to type them into the comment box below this live stream. I'll bring up the questions later during the Q&A section and they'll be answered by our speaker. Also, please don't forget to like and share this live video with your family and friends so that they too may join in. Now, without further ado, I welcome Dr. Mangai Karasi to speak on the topic of sleep apnea. Here's to you, Dr. Mangai. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm very happy to be in this Asuntas doctor's talk, and the topic of the day will be sleep apnea. Well, first of all, let me introduce myself. I come from a small town. This is a picture of my town. It's called Taiping. This, uh, if you look at the tree, this is called Samana Saman tree. This tree grows towards the water. So this scene from Taiping is always close to my heart. So I, I'm glad to begin my slides with this picture. Let's move on. Obstructive sleep apnea, or in common terms, in layman's terms, people call it a sleep apnea. So is this common? Definitely it is common. Do everyone know about it? Well, overall, the awareness is still poor in our country. Not many people are aware about this condition. So I hope with this talk, we can highlight uh, a bit on obstructive sleep apnea to everyone. Well, normally how do obstructive sleep apnea patients present to a doctor? Or what are their symptoms? What do they you know, uh, present with? Usually the commonest symptom that they come with is sleepiness. They're very sleepy during the day, you know. It's like most of the time, it's like after a heavy lunch, they fall asleep. While driving, they're sleepy. They have to stop on the side of the road and have a quick nap for about five, 10 minutes and continue driving. Some of them, while reading newspapers or storybooks, they just doze off. Or while watching TV, they doze off. So this kind of symptoms are the cardinal features of obstructive sleep apnea. Apart from sleepiness, some patients do not even feel it is a symptom. You know, they just feel it is normal to be sleepy and they attribute it to poor sleep at night. And uh, the other common symptom that patients usually present with is tiredness or fatigue and uh, sometimes poor concentration. Some patients just can't concentrate at work, especially kids. You know, in school, they may not be able to concentrate. In school, they may not be able to do what the teachers are asking to do. They are uh, poor in academics. The reason could be simple as obstructive sleep apnea. And if you treat this patient, the symptoms will go away. So these are the common symptoms of obstructive sleep apnea. And of course, many of them do have disturbed sleep. Disturbed sleep meaning like snoring, restless and sometimes you even see them stop to sleep. Okay, you can have what we call it as resuscitated snorts. Right, so if you look into this picture, this is a classical picture of uh, of how an OSA patient presents or have. All right, this is a 
upper airways, you can see the air moving through the nose to the uh, airways, it's being blocked, right? There's a huge blockage in the upper airway leading to the snoring and apneas. Hence, this happens repeatedly during the night when you're sleeping. So when this happens, you have snoring, you have apneas, and during the day, you can have tightness, lethargy, and sleepiness. And usually this happens among obese patients. Obesity is a major, major, major risk factor for obstructive sleep apnea. So if you see, this is a epoch of a sleep study, right? So if you can see, there's, if you see the flat lines, right? Those are apneas. If you can see the up and down lines, the patient is breathing, and suddenly they just stop breathing while they're sleeping. So this can actually, it's a repetitive cycle, which happens throughout the night. And sometimes some patients even stop breathing for 30 to 40 seconds, right? So what are the prevalence of obstructive sleep apnea? It's very common, right? The US data shows 10 to 15% of females have the disease. And uh, how about in males, 20 to 30%, which means if you take an average population, 20 to 30 males out of 100 males will have obstructive sleep apnea. And about 10 to 15 females out of 100 females will have obstructive sleep apnea. And the prevalence is almost similar in Asia. And some studies actually have shown it is higher in Asia. This is due to the abnormal facial development among the Asians, or in medical terms, we call it cranial facial abnormality. So is this common? Definitely, you know, when you say two to three out of 10 males of obstructive sleep apnea, it's very common. Okay, how about in Malaysia? What's happening in Malaysia? In a recent study, actually, they took about 289 bus drivers. And surprisingly, 128 of them had obstructive sleep apnea. And in this study, many of them did not even realize their sleepiness, their tiredness, their lethargy. None of them even realized them about it. So in this study, randomly, they picked 289 bus drivers. And they were made to go through a sleep study. And you can see that more than half of them had obstructive sleep apnea. Can you imagine bus drivers having untreated obstructive sleep apnea? Meaning they're going to be sleepy, they're tired. How are they going to concentrate on the road, right? So, and among the subjects, almost half of them had severe disease. And, uh, sorry, had mild disease. And uh, about, what do you call it, about... 9% of them had severe disease. Right. Is there any connection between sleep apnea and heart diseases? Definitely there is. If you see some patients, their blood pressure is very difficult to control. Or in medical terms, we call it drug-resistant hypertension. That means the blood pressure is not coming down. Some patients, you know, they are taking more than three medications, four medications, to control their blood pressures, but still, if they go and check their blood pressure in the clinic or Sehatan or outpatient clinics or the specialist clinic, they find the blood pressures are still high. So, one of the reasons is because of the sleep apnea. You see, during the night, when you have apnea, it means you're stopping to breathe. Your heart has to work harder, it has to pump harder to supply oxygen to the whole body. And you can see the airway is being blocked here. Because of that, during the day, your blood pressures can go. Higher because there are changes in the vascular uh, in the blood vessels, right? And as you know, most patients are severely obese, and hence they are prone for both sleep apnea and heart diseases. A lot of sleep apnea patients, untreated sleep apnea, they can go into the heart and fail. We call it congestive heart and fail. The heart can fail whereby they will be breathless. They have water retention in the legs. They can't climb upstairs. They can't sleep flat. They will be you know, fighting and gasping for breath, right? There is a higher prevalence of diabetes in untreated sleep apnea patients. Sleep apnea patients can have lots of other arrhythmias. They can have the heart beating very much irregularly. The heart can stop breathing, beating, right? 
and then they can have clots in the blood vessels the heart or coronary artery diseases right you can hear that layman will always say oh my uncle had a heart attack and one of the reasons for the heart attack could be untreated sleep apnea and a lot of them will have chest pain so sleep apnea is highly prevalent in cardiovascular diseases and in this slide is interesting if you see so if you see the higher the ahi ahi means how bad is your sleep apnea that means your apnea hypopnea index whereby the more the number the more severe the obstructive sleep apnea is so if your ahi is more than 15 that means you're stopping to breathe more than 15 times in and one hour right in an hour you're stopping to breathe more than 15 times so the the, the more worse your ahi becomes that means it is it's slowly increasing you know so if you see in this slide when your ahi is less than 5 and when your ahi is more than 15 the prevalence of hypertension actually increases double the chances so this slide will tell you that more severe the disease you have the blood pressure will go up that means the hypertension is more prevalent with increased ahi the severe the disease the severe the hypertension is and this slide will tell you that in the sleep apnea group patients they have higher chances of uh, developing automobile accidents this is because throughout the night the patient though they are sleeping they are snoring they are having apnea they are stopping to breathe the oxygen level drops the heart has to beat faster so they are not having full refreshed sleep so during the day while they are driving they are more sleepy they are tired they can't concentrate hence they meet accidents hence sleep apnea patients are more prevalent to develop automobile accidents in the gender if you see sleep apnea is more common in the males than in females and in the males is two to three times more common than in females and obesity is a very interesting topic i always thought if you see if you get if you increase your weight 10% that means you are six times more prevalent to have obstructive sleep apnea let me say if a patient was say uh, about 80 kilos and suddenly now she becomes 88 so the there is six times increased risk of developing sleep apnea so the more weight you increase the higher chances of having sleep apnea this is proven definitely proven and those patients who have a bmi of above 40 and so super obese patients they don't only have a condition this condition called obstructive sleep apnea but they also have obesity hyperventilation syndrome whereby the muscles and the lungs can't cope to breathe for the need of the body right so in this group of patients they are more prone for obstructive sleep apnea and obesity hyperventilation syndrome or obesity. well being malay in malaysia malaysia way right it's very sad for me to say that we have very high rates of obesity or uh, overweight so among the south asian country we are the highest in fact to have overweight population 44.2% of our population have a bmi of above 25 which is really sad which means we have a lot of overweight patients and if you see we are the first in the south asian countries to have overweight population right so if we go back to the slide okay why do you think we have so much of obesity in this country basically is the diet malaysia well whenever whatever time you go you can buy food nasi lemak nasi goreng there's lots of mama stall that's open 24 hours mcdonald's is open 24 hours so our eating habits and plus lack of exercise we do not give much importance to exercise so these are the reasons that has attributed to our obesity rate and obesity is highly associated with obstructive sleep apnea and if you go back to our previous slides you can see how much damage that obstructive sleep apnea can actually do to a person so this is cranial facial and upper airway abnormality so means you have an abnormal uh, you know aries this happens in asian patients right where they have short mandibles and 
because of the abnormalities, they're more prone for obstructive sleep apnea. When they have abnormalities in the upper airway, when they see the airways get blocked or their windpipe gets blocked, hence they develop sleep apnea. Are there any other risk factors for developing sleep apnea? Well, if you remember back, the first risk factor was definitely obesity, and then the second was upper airway abnormalities. Then, of course, you have nasal congestions, smoking. By smoking, you're you know you're putting yourself at higher risk of sleep apnea. Menopausal women, family history, and of course, people who use alcohol, benzodiazepines, narcotics. Okay. Clinical manifestations, snoring and wake time sleepiness are common presenting complaints of obstructive sleep apnea. Right. Usually patients do not realize they snore. Usually it's the bed partner that realizes, hey, my husband snores. Hey, my wife snores. Right? And some snoring is so loud. Even I had a patient who the wife will come and tell me, doctor, I sleep actually in the room beside his room because I can't sleep beside him. But even from the side room, I can hear him snoring. So some snoring can be really super loud. But do all sleep apnea patients have to have snoring? No. You can have sleep apnea without snoring. But that is one of the most common clinical manifestations. And of course, wake time sleepiness. During the day, they're sleepy, they're tired, they can't concentrate. So this is a picture. The wife is having a headache with the husband who's snoring happily. Right? So you can see some patients actually doze off in the train, in the bus, while sitting down and traveling. Right. So the other clinical manifestations, they can have nocturnal choking or gasping. Practically while sleeping, they will stop breathing. That's what will happen. They stop to breathe. And they can have snoring. We've already said that. I've already said, talked about excessive weight and sleepiness. Tiredness, the blood pressures will be uncontrolled. And the other symptom that I've never mentioned so far is one of the commonest reasons for an early morning headache when they wake up, they wake up with terrible headache is because of sleep apnea. And of course, a lot of patients can develop stroke because of untreated sleep apnea. How do we diagnose sleep apnea? It is simple. We have to do a sleep study. There are many types of sleep study, which is, uh, we have two types of sleep study. One is a partial, and the second is a full sleep study. And uh, which patients, how do we do it? Please refer to a clinician. It's always a clinician's decision whether they want to do a partial, whether they want to do a full. There are lots of clinical indications for what kind of study that is needed. I'm not going to go into details about who do we do partial sleep study, who do we do full sleep study. But if you have any symptoms like snoring, daytime sleepiness, you know, apnea, you have your blood pressures are very high, early morning headaches, please refer to a doctor for because most likely you will need a sleep study to diagnose obstructive sleep apnea. Why do we need to treat OSA in the first thing? Why do we need to do a sleep study? Why do we need to diagnose? There are many reasons for it. Because as we have seen in the earlier slide, uh, the heart trouble in relation to sleep apnea, right? So in those patients who are not treated for sleep apnea, severe untreated sleep apnea, they have a higher risk of cardiovascular problem. Cardiovascular problem meaning things like heart attacks, strokes, right? Sudden death. So in the group of untreated sleep apnea, the risk of uh, non-fatal heart attacks are very high. Whereas if we treat your sleep apnea, the risk of heart failure, heart attacks, strokes, everything comes down. Hence, that is why we need to treat sleep apnea. We need to diagnose sleep apnea. This is very important. You know, some patients have even told me, doctor, I just know so what? It doesn't matter. I'm sleepy, so what? Let me just sleep. It's not only that, because if you don't treat yourself with sleep apnea, you're putting yourself at risk for developing heart attacks, for developing stroke. You can have sudden cardiac arrest. Hence, that is why we need to treat sleep apnea. So, in a, to go back to, you know, to re-emphasize, sleep apnea really hurts <laughs> hearts, which means that, you know, H, sleep apnea patients can go into heart failure, the blood pressures can go high, they can have arrhythmias, 
they can have high blood pressure, which is resistant hypertension. They can develop type 2 diabetes and they can develop a stroke. So, we really do not want population with stroke where they can't work, you know, they are dependent and uh, they need help and assistance. Hence, by treating sleep apnea, by detecting sleep apnea, we can prevent patients from going into or having stroke. Motor vehicle accidents that many times we have lost many lives in accidents. And one of the reasons is because the driver is just sleepy, he can't concentrate on the road and he, you know, he accidentally hits into someone. Hence, to prevent motor vehicle accidents, we definitely need to treat sleep. And of course, your pressures in the heart can go high. To prevent this, we need to treat sleep. I've already mentioned this. To reduce daytime sleepiness, we need to treat the sleep apnea. To reduce type 2 diabetes status and hypertension. Is there treatment for sleep apnea? Yes, definitely there is treatment for sleep apnea. OSA or obstructive sleep apnea should be approached as a chronic disease that requires long-term and multidisciplinary care. That means uh, you need multiple team into treating you. Always we need to educate our population. Our population omulations have to be aware of this disease, have to have this insight that this disease is dangerous. They have to approach doctors early and we have to diagnose them and they should be adhering to the treatment for a healthy population. And uh, I feel that most patients should be aware of the risk of motor vehicle accidents with, that is associated with untreated OSA and the other consequences of untreated OSA. How do we treat OSA? There are many treatments. Uh, we can use a sleeping device called a CPAP or a BiPAP. There are belts and there are oral devices for who needs what kind of treatment, when do we need this, when do we need that, please refer to a clinician. And uh, first of all, we need to go through your history, we need to examine you, we need to get a sleep study, then we need to go through the study, how is it, then finally we will decide what kind of treatment and when do you need it and how do you need it. So in summary, quality of sleep is important for overall health, sleep duration affects cardiovascular health, Obstructive sleep apnea contributes to heart diseases with a number of systemic mechanisms. Treatment of sleep apnea improves cardiovascular outcomes. Hence, sleep apnea can be detected. I'm glad to take any questions from the floor. Thank you, Dr. Mange, for the interesting and informative talk on sleep apnea. I've learned so much already about sleep apnea. Looks like there are quite a number of questions coming in from our viewers, so let's dive straight in. And we have a question here from Mr. Jukamate. Hi, doctor. Do all snorers have sleep apnea? Well, it's a very interesting question. Do all snorers have sleep apnea? Actually, no. That is why I say if you snore, it's always good to approach to a doctor. We need to get the history, we need to examine, we need to, you know, probably get a sleep study to see whether we have sleep apnea or not. All snorers do not have sleep apnea. Do all sleep apnea patients have snoring? No, as well. So, so sometimes you can just have primary snoring without sleep apnea. Uh, so is snoring totally abnormal? No. Uh, hence, we need a further clinical evaluation by a medical practitioner to decide so yeah. also whether if you snore, if you have sleep apnea or not. Before we go on to the next question, for all those who are live with us today, you may still submit your questions via the comment box below. And do keep the questions coming. Um, is sleep apnea common in Asian patients, doctor? Yes, it common? is. It is very common. As I said, it, you know, among the males, we are expecting all the studies have shown two to three males out of ten patients may develop uh, sleep apnea. So, 
it is more common in the Asians than the Caucasians. In fact, some studies have revealed our population has a higher risk of sleep apnea than the regular population. Okay. So this was a question by uh, Miss Rachel. So she has asked that whether Asians are more prone to sleep. In the interest of time, I'm afraid that we won't be able to address any more questions. So do keep the questions coming and we'll answer them in the comments below. As we have reached the end of our live talk, thank you once again, Dr. Mangai Karasi, for giving us an in-depth look into sleep apnea. Thank you all for staying with us throughout the session and we hope that you've benefited greatly from this talk. Stay safe, everyone. Thank you once again and take care.